Good evening, everyone. I recommend everyone follow George Gammon's content. He puts out a lot of great stuff and uh, I advise all my clients to listen to George's channel, uh, to follow some of his analysis. Uh, but in the video today, George was talking to Joseph Wang, uh, the Fed guy, and they were a little confused about uh, what gold is correlated with. So let's just have a quick listen to what George says here. Have access to that. Have you, have you found anything in your research that has some sort of correlation with gold and what i mean by that is i did a whiteboard video the other day and everyone thinks well it's the inverse of the dollar no it's not you just go back 20 30 years there's very little correlation uh they say well it's positive real rates that's not it because <laughs> you can do the exact same thing they say oh it's an inflation hedge no that's no. that's not it either there are times where yes it goes up with inflation then times it as an inverse correlation so it seems like if you just look at it over the span of 100 years, you know darn well that it's going to maintain its purchasing power. But, but you know, from year to year, I mean, who the hell knows what drives it? Uh, other than it seems like a lack of liquidity makes it sell off. And then maybe geopolitical risk usually makes it go up. Okay, so let's help George out with that a bit if we can. And I know this is a little unfair. He's not here to talk about it more deeply or to provide counter arguments, but I understand this is an oversimplification, but let's have a look at this chart of gold versus global bonds. So this is a chart with the white line going back to 2014, measuring the price of gold. And the red line, of course, is Bloomberg's global aggregate total return. In other words, uh, a, an index that measures the performance of global investment grade bonds. And you can see from, and I'll show this on another chart as well, you can see from 2014 through to about the end of 2021 there was a very strong correlation between the price performance of bonds as an asset class and the price performance of gold now how do, let's try and measure that with a real world investment so for example vanguard has the total bond market etf bnd and this of course is not a recommendation to buy any of this we're just looking at it for educational purposes and you can see that the products the funds investment is to track the performance of the broad market weighted bond index and you can see that the index that they're trying to track is the bloomberg aggregate bond index uh, well, they're somewhat try doing their best to try and track that, I guess. Uh, and what we can do is if we come over here, we can see a price chart of gold futures. And now I've skewed it up there a little bit because you'll see in a moment when I do a comparison, uh, this is the price of gold going back to 2006. So much longer than this chart of 2014. So let's go back 15, 16, 17 years, and you'll, you'll see why in a sec as the correlation breaks. And if we go compare symbol, Vanguard total bond market ETF, and you can see the black line, very strong correlation from about 2007. I, I imagine that's when this fund started, or at least that's when I can get data to. So from 2007, before the global financial crisis, you can see the black line is the bond fund, the price of gold with the red and green candles. And you can see, aside from a couple of times where gold got ahead and sold off a bit harder, pretty strong correlation. In fact, a very strong correlation until about late 2021. And we can talk about that in a moment, but you can see very strong correlation. So I would argue that gold is correlated with the overall performance of the bond market. Now, let's have a listen to something else that George said in this interview. We'll play that now. Uh, they say, well, it's positive real rates. That's not it. because <laughs> You can do the exact same thing. Well, slightly different to what George is saying. So this is a little unfair, but here's a chart of the gold price going back to 2007 with gold in the golden color, of course, and then the 10 year real rate. So the 10 year US bond, the real interest rate, and you can see the blue line up until 20, the start of 2022. So what's that? A 15 year period, a very strong correlation between the price of gold and what real interest rates are doing. So I would argue there is a correlation. Uh, now, this is a far deeper discussion. So I understand what George is saying, but clearly you can see on the chart that for 15 years there, there was quite a strong correlation. Now let's talk about why this correlation has broken. So here's my theory as to why in late 2021, early 2022, the bond market started collapsing and broke the 15 year correlation with gold. So we know as yields or interest rates on bonds go up, prices are coming down. And we know there's been a big inflation problem uh, that became more apparent or it should have been more apparent before 2022, but it became apparent to the market in 2022. 
And of course, that caused central banks to, or the market to anticipate that central banks would raise interest rates aggressively, which they did in on a relative basis. Uh, and that caused a big crash in bond prices, a uh, historic crash. And gold has, uh, gold held, treaded water and has now broken out. Here's my theory on that. We're starting to see evidence that inflation is picking up again and perhaps the second wave is upon us. This is the CRB Commodity Index, which measures 19 key commodities. Uh, you can read them there if you'd like to pause, but very key things that factor into our daily lives. You can see trending back up since December, the last four or five months, quite a strong uptrend. We can see despite a 5.5% inflation rate in the United States and the Fed having a target of 2% inflation, Inflation has never fallen below 3%. It's been going sideways since June 2023 at 3%. And in fact, it's now just ticked up a little bit in the last three months from 3.1 to 3.5%. So the 5.5% is not stopping the inflation. So this time last year, when bond prices were roughly the same or even a little bit higher than they are now based on this particular fund, the Federal Reserve had to enact an emergency bailout program, the Bank Term Funding Program, which we won't go into depth here. But in short, the banks are in trouble because of the massive losses on their bond portfolios, uh, their mortgages, and the Federal Reserve had to allow the banks to swap these underwater assets for cash to keep the banks afloat. Of course, we had larger bank failures in March 2023 in, in terms of dollar assets than we had in the global financial crisis of 2008. Well, bond prices are the same as they are now. So what this tells me is that I think that bonds are most likely going to recover sharply in price to recapture this relationship. And that's because despite the inflation numbers being bad, uh, looking like inflation is picking up again, uh, because there's so much debt and we're on the verge of a, potentially on the verge of a banking crisis, I think the market understands that the central banks have very little ability to raise interest rates further, that they've lost the inflation fight, and that not only can they not raise rates further, but they're probably going to have to go back to cutting rates and restarting QE, money printing, asset purchase programs, whatever you want to call them, to buy these bonds as they did during uh, the COVID crisis. And I think we'll see some of this. And I think that's the reason for the disconnection is that They've jacked up rates. The market believed them, thinking that jacking up rates would stop inflation. It's starting to become apparent that it hasn't worked, that inflation is not coming back to target. And so I think the reason gold is going up because is because it's anticipating central banks like the Federal Reserve, like the European Central Bank, restarting their bond buying programs, slashing interest rates, propping these markets up. Of course, to prop up governments that have too much debt and to prop up the banking system, which holds all these bonds as collateral. Uh, that would be my thesis. And that Okay, so in summary for George, what I would suggest is that gold is correlated with the price performance of the bond market. And the reason for that, we could see a 15-year track record of that. And the reason for the disconnection is that central banks have massively manipulated those markets by jacking up interest rates doing QT, uh, not supporting that market, putting downward selling, or well, putting downward pressure on that market, selling pressure on that market. And the gold market is telling you, hey, we know governments have way too much debt. We know banks are underwater on their bond portfolios and gold is pricing. It's somewhat, in my opinion, pricing in the fact that central banks are gonna have to go back to cutting interest rates asset purchase programs, money printing programs, QE, whatever you want to call it, and they're going to have to potentially start buying these bonds again. And I know gold is going up for other factors, uh, some of the other things going on in the world, but I would say this is a big part of it. And hopefully that proves that there is some correlation between gold and other asset classes or other measures. And thank you for listening.